There we go. All right, everybody, real quick, just a quick welcome to everybody again. I already started, but I, I forgot to hit the record button. I'm joined with David Peace here from Experience Lights, uh, and we're going to talk about using FPP and these big buttons. He has a bunch of them. I here. like big buttons, and I cannot lie. And so he had to bring that into it, too. He's our comic relief. That's Mr. Robert Van Orsdale. Thank you, Robert, for joining us. And Mr. David Peace. We were just about to start talking about the big buttons and uh, the options. And Robert, would you like to tell them the options that they have? So you have three options. They come in single packs or five packs. They are rounded round buttons, rounded flat buttons, and three-sided rounded buttons, also known as triangles. All right. All right. And so David- You are very consistent in your delivery well done all right well that's what that's what we need them here for they're it's selling out fast folks look at the little ticker at the bottom left hand corner of the screen you can see we were almost sold out up uh -uh. there just went the single white color buttons we only have multi-colored buttons left now so uh david go ahead why don't you talk about the buttons and talk about uh we were we were also talking about this other box, this additional piece that is called the input extender node. Uh, this is this is something that is not 100% necessary, but we're going to try to bring this into tonight's uh, conversation as well. Uh, yeah. Go go ahead there. So I, I think it's best to actually just show this instruction sheet because it tells the story better than I can uh, just verbalize here. Um, so when you when you get the buttons, it comes with this instruction sheet front and back, which says how to assemble the buttons and how to hook it up, and they're basically consistent whether it's the rounded buttons, um, the flat buttons, or the triangle buttons are all pretty much the same. Um, the bases are the same. Uh, you um, have the uh, button fixture itself. You have an LED, which is the light source, and then you have the actual um, um, the, the the button uh, switch that that goes beneath it that is pressed as the button is pressed. So. Um, the way the LED works, very simple. There's five different colors of LEDs that match the five different colors of the buttons. Um, and you'll notice that there's two strands of wire that are going around the legs. Uh, there is a short leg that only usually has one wind. That's the negative or the ground lead. And then the other side has longer leads, which is like two winds, and that's the positive lead. Um, all of the, the LEDs are uh, made for 12 volt, but they will work with five volt. It'll just be dimmer. Um, so, uh, you basically want to take that LED housing and, uh, push it, excuse me, take that LED and push it down into the housing. Um, and it basically exposes some spade terminals, which makes it easier to connect to. So, um, it goes in both ways. The instructions tell you an uh, easy way to, um, align it. Um, where you can have the, the negative side go towards the thinner leg or the thinner side of the housing and the wider housing goes to the positive because once that LED is down in there, it's harder to identify um, the positive and the negative. Uh, the good news is if you get it wrong, it just won't turn on. It's not going to break anything. It's a diode. Electricity only flows in one direction. So if it doesn't light up, you can just swap those back the other way. Thank you for the show and tell. You're welcome. Bye. Um, so this this per, this was a little perplexing at first because I didn't get it at first, but there's two little nubs right there in the center. There's the white pieces you see there, and then there's two black nubs in the middle, and that lines up, I think, with yeah, they kind of twist and lock in there. With with on the side here, there's a there's a twist and lock right here, and those yep. line up on both sides. I I really didn't see that until I got going. Once once you slide it in, you. Come on, come on, you lock in place. Yeah, so push it down and then twist to the right and it should there lock we go. in there. Yep. And so now it's locked in place and then we have our two uh, connectors. And the only thing that you, you don't have in the kit um, is, is the wiring because the wiring right. is gonna be very, very specific to what your needs are. Correct, correct. So you were talking about the wiring, that's the next piece, go ahead. Uh, well, actually I just wanna talk about the, the switch first. So on that, um, LED housing, there's two pegs. And on the, the switch, you'll see that there's two holes and those align. So you want to basically slide that up in there, pop it in there, and it's going to, those holes are going to align to those two pegs. Um, you can see these two holes here align to these two pegs here. 
So that pushes up in there. And what that does is it makes it so when you push down on the button, it's pushing down on the little um, little button here at the top, which uh, activates the switch. So it's a very, very simple mechanism. Um, you'll see this a lot of times with switches or relays, NC or NO. So that means normally closed or normally open. Normally means when the button is not pressed. So um, the common terminal at the bottom, the one that's angle bracketed down here, uh, is always electrically con connected to, or excuse me, it's electric connected to the normally closed when the button is not pressed. When the button is pressed, the common and the normally open get connected. So um, for the purposes of um, doing triggers in FPP, you'll typically are going to keep the normally closed terminal not connected because we only want to um, connect the uh, contact when the button is pressed and it will connect these two contacts, the normally open and O and the common terminal. Um, and there's a little wiring diagram here to illustrate that. Um, the common is going to be connected to the normally closed by default. And then when that button is pressed, it's going to connect the common terminal to the normally open. Um, and then you have uh, the hookup guide here. So um, the, like I said, these are 12 volt LEDs. So you're gonna hook up the uh, ground to the negative side of the LED. You're gonna hook the um, positive to the uh, 12 volts side. And then um, you're, you're just gonna simply on each of the, um, so each of the uh, input trigger ports there's going to be two screw terminals. Now we're talking um, about we're talking about on the uh, on the actual board itself. We're talking yeah, about and this the... can be either the in and out pie hat or on the extender node. It's exactly the same. It does not matter which um, wire goes to which end. Um, at the end of the day, what's going to be happening is when those when the button is not pushed, it's floating. It's like the two wires are just sitting here disconnected. When you press the button. It connects them. So it doesn't matter which wire is on which side. As soon as you press the button, it's just going to connect those two contacts. If you so, want to. So if, I, if I'm, so I'm going to hook these up while we're talking about this. I have one wire. It is stripped on one end. I have two lines to it, right? Yep. I've connected one here. And then I am going to connect another one to the uh, elbow here on the bottom, which. Yep. I have upside down compared to the diagram. Now that looks like the diagram. So hopefully you can see that. Yep. And so now what I'll do is you're explaining this is I'm going to go wire this into um, into the number 12 slot, like just like you have it. We'll, we'll, yeah. Like and uh, if I'm not mistaken, Clyde, and I, I might not see it, but it looks like you might have connected to the normally closed contact as opposed to the normally open. But I could be wrong because I couldn't see close enough. OK, so here I'll hold it back up. I the line went to the bottom one, so that's where I went and put it. Uh, I think it should, it's so again, I can't really see. Is it closer to the common line or uh, it should be? Oh, ha. Ah. You want it's it closer that, to the common line? Yeah, it should be the one that's the closest to the common line. That's okay. And it, sh and it should be labeled on their NO. There we go. Yep. Okay, cool. It doesn't mean no. It means normally open. It means normally open. That is or on doesn't mean on the. And it NC doesn't, doesn't if you mean turn North it upside. Carolina, it means normally closed. Or normally OZ. Closed. If you turn it one way and read it sideways, it says OZ top to bottom. That's true. Or if you flip it all the way and say on. Or ZO. If you and W O backwards Z. We could go all night with this. So uh, real quick with the in and out pie hat. Um, yeah, so before the in and out Pi hat, there was just the Raspberry Pi Pi hat, which was, or uh, excuse me, the input extender Pi hat, which its goal was to make it easier to have input triggers further away using a Cat5 cable. And that's where the input extender node was created. So that was created first, which is why it's numbered one, two, three, four, five, six. The in and out Pi hat came later, came second. And the idea was, well, you can still use the input extender node and it will still be one, two, three, four, five, six. Or you can use um, the screw terminals that are on the in and out pi hat seven through 12. Um, 
So you can have 12 input triggers if you want, or you can have just the six on the in and out pi hat um, if you don't want to use the extender node. So in the case of the in and out pi hat, the extender node is actually optional. Um, whereas if you're using the input extender pi hat, which is a different product, you have to use the input extender node. So I hope that made sense. So for um, for visual visual reference, now I haven't hooked up any power to this because that's the we've only hooked up the uh, just the switch. We're on the normally opened common yes. and normally and what you open, should be able and to we're do on, and it doesn't matter which one of these goes to the number twelve. The, uh, there's it doesn't matter because it's just the switch. Correct. So, and and. Um, Clyde, if you could, if you press the button, you should see the little button on the switch be pressed down. The little the little knob at the top that should press when you press the button. It sure does. Okay, perfect. Here, I'll uh, I'll I'll even demonstrate that. Maybe you, maybe you can get a good close up of it. Let me see. Yep. See the little white thing there. So yeah. Perfect. Totally on, on point right there. Cool. All right. Well, I'm going to stop sharing now. That's that's the hookup part of it. We we do need to get the power over to it. That's the other one that I haven't hooked up yet. So uh, I do need to make note of which one I'm connecting to which. Yeah. So since specifically it's a diode, here. Yeah. Since it's a diode, you can't damage anything. So don't worry about that. It okay. Turn on or it will not. So. So we will, as long as we, yeah, we won't damage anything. So it doesn't matter which side goes to which, but um, I'm going to make sure that, does it, can I tell which one it is from the outside here? Which yeah. One? So uh, if you put it in the orientation from the instructions, the thinner side of the housing, the one that it does not have the switch attached to it, that's going to be your negative and the wider side is going to be your positive. Hard to tell which one's wider. Oh no, it's not. The, I can look the, straight yeah, down. Yeah, so the the long one that actually has the two pegs. That's the that should be the positive side. I'm pretty sure that that's the positive, and then this is the other. So we'll hook the dash line up to. Maybe we'll get it to work. If the button doesn't, if the if it doesn't light up, we're not super concerned. Um, but we're we're putting power into the board via the power input as well. I could also run. Could I run this off of the um, five volt power or the the twelve volt power supply? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So, it, it's completely independent of any logic, so it's just going to be a constant power source so always on. At the moment, this uh, the in and out pi hat is running off of that power. So, for example, the 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 pie hat, and I've got the instructions right here, where this isn't, this is showing power going up to the button. Uh, I already have power going into that input running the, the pie at the moment. So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to unplug it and I'm going to manually just screw right in as soon as I grab my other screwdriver. And uh, we will go with negative and then the positive. So this is just, the, this is for everybody out there who's gonna be doing this or who wants to do this. Um, you have different options depending on what your setup is. Everything in this is going to be very user specific. So if you guys begin to dream about the things that you wanna do, and I said this in, in, in kind of the, the email, start dreaming about the things that you wanna use this for. I mean, um, James sent me these wings. The wings are really, really cool. I don't know that I'm, I'm, I'm going to have the the, nest, uh, the absolute perfect use case for them, but the idea that uh, I can actually make them work is the goal is to get you guys to be able to do the exact thing. Because if I can do it, and I and you know we all know FPP for dummies, that's all about me, right? Uh, if I can do it, then you guys can. So uh, we'll see. I don't see a light on the LED. So I probably have this on backwards. Would that be accurate? Uh, if it's not turning on, then yes. Yep. So, but we could, if we wanted to, we could un, uh, we could take this out, unplug it, turn it the other way, and look there, there it's popped on. I don't know if you can see it. Yep. 
And now, there we go. So now we've got we've got a series of big buttons. Um, he he did say that there is a retainer on the bottom of the uh, uh, on the bottom of this, and uh, you you do want to mount this to something. So if you had a substrate, if you had like a podium of some sort that you were to build or create, you know that would be yeah. kind of the perfect you know uh, scenario it's for doing this. Yeah, it's got a threaded ring on there, so it can tighten. Together. Right, and 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 not only that, but it's a pretty it's a pretty big. I mean, here I'll, I'll hold up the other one. That threaded ring. That threaded ring is a good one one and a quarter inch, one one and a half inch, roughly. I, I mean, you can get through a pretty good sized piece of whatever just yep. to. I mean, you need a drill bit or whatever, but um, that. So if you have material that you've already got, you don't have to spend a lot of money on stuff. Perfect. So we have our we have our we have our wiring up. We have at least one button hooked up. And uh, I think the goal now is to uh, let's get the Pi connected to the computer, which I've already I've already done that ahead of time so that we don't have to worry about um, is it going to work? Is it going to work? Uh, so what I want to do, let me share screen. So, Clyde, have you hooked up the button to the um, extender node yet? No, not yet. Okay. So we, okay. we haven't that I, I wanted to I wanted to be able to show that just run it off the hat first. OK. And then uh, from and that's, there. And that's totally fine. I was just going to show that um, before you do anything in FPP, you can actually, if you press the button, you should see the LED light up on the in and out pie hat um, for for uh, input 12 when, when you press the button. I'm sorry, I just missed that. What did you say? Oh, uh, you said you hooked it into input 12. So when you press the button, you mm -hmm. should be able to see the, the 12 LED light up. Yep, it certainly does. All right, perfect. So you are all wired up then. All right. So the the first thing that we absolutely need to do is number one, um, and I didn't do this earlier, uh, but it, it 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 will serve for a couple good lessons as we go through this. Um, what we have here is we have the controller. Uh, this is the same controller uh, as we used two weeks ago. All I did was I used the discovery and Discovery brought it up and brought it in. It set it up as a model ven a vendor FPP model Pi hat uh, as, and as a variant two output RPI WS281X. And it gave it an ID as one and uh, it, it also imported its uh, uh, 192.168.1.148, which is my home network. So we're good to go. It looks like the next thing I need to do is I need to set up or do the visualizer here. And if I want to be 100% sure, the left wing, we'll put the left wing on port number one and the right wing on port number two. And if we were to go in, uh, let's go ahead and save the layout. And and these are these are the actual models that I downloaded from the website. Uh, although uh, I have done a certified model for both of these, uh, this is the uh, Boscoyo wing, uh, the version two. These have two hundred and fifty pixels on each one, and so whenever you download them, it will be Boscoyo wing two left and Boscoyo wing two right. So, real quick, I want to verify that we have everything kind of. Uh, working correctly. The first thing I guess we should do is we should do an FPP connect. And we should um, make sure that this says models, all models, and we upload. Is that at FPP? Is that it? No, cancel, upload. And hopefully, hopefully now it knows those models are there. And I am going to, just for the heck of it, I'm going to upload my outputs anyway, because I'm used to doing that. And that shouldn't take long. Up, upload complete. Okay, so what I always like to do, because this is just naturally how I like to test things. I know the wings work. I plugged them into uh, early a, a Culp controller and just put it in test mode. Actually, it was a controller that had some uh, 
uh, programming in it that we used at uh, Expo of some sort. And uh, they lit right up. So I know they all work. I'm just going to turn them on, not white. And we will output to lights. And that looks like they're on. Let's do a bars test. And so one of the things, whenever we're testing props, we like to use the bars effect. And this is how you'll know that they are set up or working correctly. Now, if you're watching the screen, are we, sh am I, sh I am sharing the screen, correct? Yeah, it looks like him. Um, these aren't in the exact same orientation as they are on the screen. So if you see them not perfect, it's because I don't have them tilted the same angle. So try not to be too rough on me. Um, for the most part, it looks like it's doing it correctly. Bars up is always a good designator, but you also have to, whenever you're testing your models uh, with your controllers, you also want to do a bars left or a bars right. And if I always do bars left and you see the bars from the, going from the right side to the left side, if you've done everything correctly, the bars right and bars left uh, will work accurately per the screen and the bars uh, bars up will always work, uh, will generally work accurately. If, if they're not working accurately as per what your direction is that we've set here, then by all means, you need to stop and look look at how the model's set up. Uh, sometimes you'll see that with like your mega tree or your matrix, you have them backwards or something, or they're wired backwards uh, and, you, and it's usually an easy fix. So we know that this works. I'm happy. Uh, I'm not, uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't really feel like I need to go any further. Uh, and so, the other thing is, is and, and you'll see this here if I open this up here. Um, we, I did, I did two different, um, uh, three different sequences. I actually mapped the sequence in, uh, and then I also uh, picked some basic static kind of sequencing, and I gave us a couple choices. I'm going to go ahead and do a batch render on those. Uh, all three of those, and I'm going to upload them to the Pi, and then from there we'll go through the configuration steps. So that that would be the next that would be the next process that we need to do, right, Dave? Yep. All right. So we'll go to tools, and we're going to do a batch render, and it popped up on the other screen. So these are the three sequences. If you right click on this batch render screen, you can hit select all instead of having to manually check box them. If there's one or two, it's no big deal. But if you have a whole list and you've just recently made changes to your uh, x light setup. You've rearranged your, on your list here, maybe your controller list. You put FPPs in different areas and you've moved them. Uh, that changes their, their, uh, um, th their addressing. So you want to make sure that you render your all your sequences once again, uh, or otherwise any network changes that you've made won't be available. So let's go ahead, click OK here. Uh, we'll discard the changes because that was just a test. So now it's going to open. x is going to open. It's going to render these sequences. And the, the final thing is, too, is you also need to make sure that whenever you are um, whenever you are rendering these sequences, and, and these are short, two of them were 30 seconds, one was a minute and a half long. There was, it's, we're, we're working with literally two props here. Um, they're, they're, if you don't have in your preferences, it's important that you do this as well. In preferences, if you're like me, I have to I turn it on and off. But from here, you need to make sure in your preferences under sequences, you have save FSEQ file on save. That way it creates the FSEQ file, which is what's necessary to output uh, or to upload to the Pi or to the BeagleBone in order to run your, your sequences. So that's I, I wanted to fill in kind of all the blanks there. If you don't have that set, make sure it's set and it will create your FSEQ files uh, when you hit the save button. So that's that's the purpose of, of going through pretty much all of that uh, 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 re-rendering here. Let me get this out of the way and let me find a blank screen and we'll do what was the IP address. We'll open that up. Let's uh, um, open. There we go. Do, do, do. Just so you know, Clyde, you're just sharing your X lights window at the moment. Yep. Okay. There just wanted to go. make sure. There we go. There we go. Okay. So we have our FPP instance uh, open. This is the Raspberry Pi that we have set up from last week. Uh, the next thing we need to do is we need to get our uh, our um, 
our uh, individual uh, FSEQ files and MP3 files if we were uh, so going to use them. So what I would start with is I would go to File Manager under the Content Setup, and uh, you can drag and drop the files in there. So here's my file type, and here is here's the um, the three FSEQ files. I'll go ahead and drag them over here, and that should upload them. There we go. We're green and. Uh, the other thing, too, is if you, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, anybody, by all means in the comments, uh, because, again, this is FPP for dummies, uh, if you do not have the MP3 for a sequence and it requires it, does it, it does not play, does it? It skips right over it in the playlist. Is that correct or am I wrong? Nope. Okay, so it will still play it. It just won't play any audio because it has nothing linked to it. Okay, Alex Alex confirmed that. Thank you. So I, for whatever reason, I was under the impression that that was a, oh, it, you'll get an error saying that there is a missing media file, which will happen because I'm about to find the media file that is necessary for this. And I'm dragging that in there right now. Whoops, I guess I can't. I have to, uh, oh, I guess I can. It says drag and drop. There we go. There's the MP3 for the uh, FSEQ that matches it. So uh, not that we're going to play any music out of there, but it will alleviate us from uh, it will alleviate us from having any errors. So David, from here, we've done all of the prep work. We know that our we know that our network works. We know that everything is set up correctly. Take us from this point, if you would. Sure. Please. Yeah. So um, go ahead and scroll up. Um, and uh, I will admit it's been a little bit since I've been in here, so uh, making sure it's still the same. So under, under input output setup, uh, you're going to go to channel inputs. No, uh, channel. GPIO inputs. Sorry, excuse me. Oh, GPIO input, which is where I was before. Yep. Okay. And so, you know, the, the GPIO number and the header pin number are a little bit confusing. So if you actually look on the in and out Pi hat next to each of those numbers, you're going to see the same thing where it's going to show the GPIO number next to the trigger number. So if you're hooked up to 12, it should show you what the corresponding, and I'm going to go grab mine too, so I can. Okay. So number 12, it says GPIO seven. And it says Got that it. right on the board. Cool. So that looks like that is P1-26, the, the last one in your list there, um, GPIO number seven. This yep. one here. Yep. And um, it has an external um, pull down, uh, but uh, you can certainly just ch change that to a pull down if you want, just for, for kicks. Uh, that's uh, you know just something I normally do, even though it's probably not necessary. Um, and um, if you click on scroll up, I'm, 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 we have a edge. description here. OK, so rising edge and falling edge. So so what happens is um, and yeah, you could name that, you know, red button um, or blue button or green button, just so you know which button is hooked up where. Um, so there's rising edge and falling edge. And what those mean is the rising edge is when the button is pressed that is going to raise the logic. There's level shifters on the board there that change that button press to uh, the 3.3 volts, which is safe for the Pi. So a rising edge is gonna be when you push that button down and the falling edge is when you let go of the button. Typically, you're gonna be doing this on the rising edge. Uh, you could even do something where you press the button, it does one thing, you let go of the button, it does something else. But just for the sake of simplicity, we're just gonna worry about the rising edge for now. And if you go to command, there should be a um, start sequence. Um, you, can, you can do a whole lot of things. Obviously, you can see here, you can um, start a playlist. You can uh, do effects, which are very cool. Um, effects, uh, you know, and I don't know if we have time, um, but uh, Clyde, I can show you how that looks in X lights to do um, effects. But uh, for, for this, I think what you want to do is actually just run a, a, a sequence. So for for this, when we when we activate this, we're looking to run an FSEQ. Uh, that's an effect. So scroll down, might be start. Maybe maybe it needs to be a playlist because I don't see. Um, 
don't see anything to just play an FACQ file uh, or start playlist item. Scroll up. And if anyone uh, can tell me if I'm missing something. Playlist will let you uh, select a sequence is what Alex is saying. Okay. All right. Perfect. So go so down to... Um, uh, down to start playlist. Start playlist. So what, what means we'll have to, Oh, there we go. There we go. Yep. So the playlist, Oh, so it creates a playlist based on the FSEQ name. Got it. And we have the option to select any one of these. Yep. So, uh, now typically what I've done in the past, especially with the wings is I create a, sequence that is the color of the button that was pressed because typically people are doing this for selfies right in front of the wings and they're like oh i want a red background a green background a blue background and usually i would have a fseq file that corresponds to that color and i would also typically hit repeat so that it doesn't turn off you know while in the middle of their their selfie so for this example, all the, uh, the the two sequences I made with the wings, they're they're very simple and basic, but uh, one of them is red. So we'll go ahead and use that. Now, do we need to fill in this other command here? No, I would just Falling leave that edge. blank. So yeah, I mean that you again. That's that's going to trigger when you release the button, but I wouldn't um, I wouldn't do anything for that. Uh, one other thing to mention um, on the left there, where it says repeat and if not running. So uh, if not running is important. So I would go ahead and check that. What that means is if you have a little kid um, and they always do this and they're the button smashers, right? And they keep pressing the button. Mm -hmm. It's not going to keep starting the sequence over. It's only going to start that if that sequence is not currently the one that is running. Okay. So if the kids get, if the kids get a little more excited and they start hitting the red button and the, then the clear button and then the blue button, it's going to only activate what, what those are for that moment. Right. Yep. yep. Okay, so and that, for, and that should be it to basically start that playlist. Let's um, go ahead and the try hit and save, button. right? Yep. And we should be good to go uh, as soon as we restart FPPD. And it looks like it's restarted. So moment of truth. We should be able to hit this button and we should see lights come on, right? In theory. In theory. Okay, here we go. Son of a gun. Look at that. First uh, time go. Look at that. Beautiful. Well, I think that was a pretty uh overall good good uh good example of a good test. So good job, good job, Dave. You too. Now look, um, and we did not, and I swear to God, we did not practice this ahead of time. I, I didn't even know what we were, <laughs> were doing today. So <laughs> That's what he's a little nervous at first. We're going to walk by step by step, right? You know. Yep. Yep. So, um, I, I mean, we could we we can go through the process of hooking up the second button and the third button and 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 kind of doing some different things. But but I think I think overall this is one thing that uh, a lot of people are curious about. What are the major settings? This is exactly what I want to do. Uh, this is exactly. Hey, Brad, just calm down. Just keep that to yourself for now. Um, <laughs> this is exactly the kind of things that uh, people ask about consistently. And I certainly don't have all the answers. Uh, and Rob so, doesn't have the answers either because he hasn't tried. Well, no, uh, Rob, you did. I think Rob did have the opportunity to kind of mess around with it a little bit, didn't you? you might. Yeah, I got a podium sitting at my house for these that work. That's right. And you built a podium. So I forgot. And I did mine without the master David piece's help. It, well, this you, is not all. You, you, you didn't use my, I logged all, my on awesome to the, plans. I don't I logged <laughs> on to the Experience Lights website and I followed the instructions that David made that were incredible. I, I have to you, say oh, you did, so you did use those plans. I, mean, I, mean, I did. And I watched your video and I, mean, I watched you yell at it at a uh ethernet wire because it had that little thing on it and you went oh, and got your gosh. snips you're like the bane of my existence and you cut it off i hate those little things i hate those little things um one thing clyde uh just because we have a few more minutes i don't know do, um you want to talk about effects and i don't know if you've used them before but so it's something that's pretty pretty clever 
Well, I, I wanted to kind of, uh, and we can, we've got plenty of time for that. Um, what I'd like to do is I'd like to be able to try hooking up your extension board. Oh, perfect. Okay. Yeah, let's do that. And and so when when you get this, this is how it comes. I mean, it is installed inside the box. It's ready to go. Um, and it looks like, if it, 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 Dave, can you explain what the use case for this is? Can you explain why this this would be important? Yeah, why so this is necessary versus just this setup over here. What we just did. This could yeah. be sitting inside the podium, but there may be other uses. So I want you to talk about that. Would you please? Yeah, yeah. Um, so this is something that um, the idea was that you, you typically would have your show player sitting in your garage and your you know with your Raspberry Pi. But if you had something where you wanted somebody to interact with something further away, say you had this um, podium out in your driveway, for instance, um, it makes it easy to have those input triggers further away by using the Cat5 cable to direct the power and the, um, the, the input button triggers. So really, it's, it's, it's uh, a, you take the Cat5 cable, hook it up to the In-N-Out Pi Hat or the uh, input extender Pi Hat. You hook it up to the extender node, which is basically just the same six screw terminals and also a power terminal. Um, and it allows you to hook up your buttons right next to your where where the buttons actually are. And then you only have one single wire going to your Raspberry Pi, say it's in your garage. Um, the, the, you know, uh, Cat5 cable has eight conductors. Um, so two of those are for power, positive, negative. The other six are for the six uh, input triggers. Now, since... Now these are all in twisted pairs, and you know if you had a data signal, it'd be all wonky. It's not a data signal, so it's nothing to be concerned about there. It's just uh, on and off. So again, I am going to go ahead and plug these in, not plug them in, but uh, screw them into the uh, slightly diagonal terminals, which is quite helpful because you are slipping the power into these at an angle from outside of a, a tiny little box. So that was a good design idea, although I yeah that was that was new um, this year. So the other one, previous years it was horizontal, which was a little bit tricky to to get the the wires in. So yeah, now that uh, six or that twelve pin terminal block is now at a forty five degree angle, so you can slide it in easier from the top. Any any plans to do that with the power output that's listed here? Uh, that is a great point. <laughs> it probably was an omission on my part. <laughs> but uh, so, so to be sure, um, and we're looking at this diagram here, um, the, not the one where my hand's covering up, it's the one that I'm not covering. And I'm hooking up to, on the extender, the, I'm, I'm hooking up to the number one output. And if you're going to connect the power to the button, you will connect into the voltage plus and ground that is inside the box here. So if I zoom in, you, you see the power there and then you can see the network wire. So this network wire is going to carry, is, am I correct in saying this? This is gonna run power from the in and out hat yep. all the way out to your, ex, your extender. Yep, so it brings power and in, the input triggers as well. and. So um, one other thing I was going to mention is you'll notice that there's two RJ45s on there, not one. Correct, yes. And and the idea behind that was you could have multiple podiums in your yard and you could either say, hey, I want these, um, I want two podiums of six buttons and they do the same thing, but they're just at different places, basically operating on a bus, meaning they're all connected to the same thing. Or you could say, hey, I have a podium here that has three buttons and I have a podium on the other side of my uh, my yard that has three separate buttons. And then you can daisy chain the extender nodes. And um, it, again, just makes it easy to um, split off those six outputs, or excuse me, those six input triggers um, to multiple places. Okay, I'm gonna, I, I'm, I'm gonna attempt, I probably should have had this done a little bit earlier. Um, but I'm going to plug this in to the second button that we've kind of set up. 
And again, if the light doesn't come on, then the light doesn't come on. It's no big deal. We can it's always. Nobody's home. Well, that's FPP for dummies, right? That's why we're doing it. Um, okay, so I, I, I've got power going to the two pins on the bottom of the big button on either side. And I'm going to try to run this into the in and out extender. That's what, the input extender, excuse me, the input extender. And hopefully I don't do, yeah, if, if these were, if these were angled, David, just like your other ones that are here, that would be infinitely helpful. I'll do that on the next, next round. Good feedback. I actually have an early version of the board sitting in the closet. Although yeah, you, I saw that the, uh, the green ones. Yeah. The, the old, the, the, it was the first run. Yep. Yep. And I got all excited. I'm like, Oh, you don't have to send me that. No, throw that away. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, Troy asked, the triggers could be motion or pressure, sens pressure sensors. Yep, absolutely. So um, at the end of the day, any sensor or input trigger that you have is typically going to have some kind of um, relay or actuator in there to just connect two wires together. Um, we sell motion sensors, brake beams, remote control relays, and these buttons. And they all do exactly the same thing as when the event happens, it closes the contact connecting the two wires. So Motion sensor has a normally uh, normally open contact with common, same thing. Uh, the brake beam has a normally opened and a common, same thing. Uh, remote control relay, same thing. So all of them behave the exact same way. It's just kind of they're basically connecting two wires together. So we made the connection in there. The other connection that we need to make from there is our uh, two wires. And again, these ones don't matter, but we want to do it with the normally open, generally. Yep. And that was the top one here. It's really hard to do this because this one's short, but there's the, the, the top one. And this one here, which is the common. Er, get in there. Get in there. Come here. So we have, this is our trigger. This is going to our trigger. And then this is going, the other one is going into our power. Now, we haven't hooked up power just yet. So the way the power gets hooked up is just like you said, through running our Ethernet cord, which here's my Ethernet cord. Here is, here's the, uh, we're imagining this is, you know, 10 feet or, you know, 100 feet away, right? So we're, we're at a, we're at a uh, uh, 50 feet away from, from, from the original location yep. and, oh, and, and one thing to note um, and I'm sure it's fairly obvious, but I'll repeat it anyways, is you're dealing with the same, you know, physics as, as pixels in terms of voltage drop, right? So the further you go, the dimmer those LEDs are going to be. Um, so yeah, you can certainly go pretty far, uh, but five volt, you're not going to get very far. 12 volt, you'll get a, you know, a, a lot further. So yeah, maybe um, a little extra kick. So I am going to plug this into the Ethernet adapter on the Pi hat, on the in and out Pi hat, right? Yep. And it goes upside down with a pin. Where do you see the new Whataburger Pi hat? It's amazing. Okay, so as soon as, <laughs> as literally, as soon as I plug that in, I get this awesome little green LED that is shining in here. I don't know if you guys can see that or not, but it's nice and lit up right now. Uh, so that tells me we have power. Also, my LED is on. So apparently, uh, my LED is working, which means I hooked it up the right way. So yeah. now, now we have the option to have two different buttons set up. We have a red and a green. I think you guys can see the red, the or red and the yellow. Excuse me. Um, and I don't think, hit the red button. Don't hit the red button. There. Don't tell me what to do. <laughs> Um, so now we need to go back through the exact same process in our GPIO input headers yep. and on the board. Now it is the exact same thing. Does the exact same thing go for this on the board too? We're yep. on G uh, we're on output number one on the extender. And if I look on board of on the board and I look for output number one, it says GPIO 15. GPIO yep. 15, pin number 10. 
Does that make sense? Yep. Okay. Yep. So it looks so, like it's about number six down on the list there. Two, three, four, five. GPIO. Yep, that one. 15, pin number one through 10. So we'll check the box here. Uh, we left this as pull down. Yep. So we'll set this as pull down. And then we're going to name this yellow button. And then in our command here, we will go down to, uh, let's do, where is it at? Start a, a start playlist. Is that what, that's what we did down there? And we're going to use the blue green wings. Actually, the blue green wings has a gold outline. And we will do if not running, just like he said. And we'll go ahead, click save here. And that's going to require us to restart FPPD. FPPD is restarted. And Hopefully this is going to light up blue this time. Blue and green with uh, a little bit of gold. It's more white because I why did you use a yellow button if it lights up blue? Because I, I grabbed blue when we were talking really quickly and not, or I grabbed the yellow one accidentally. But life goes okay. on. It, it's supposed to have a, a a goldish outline, but I think I have this set to. Uh, uh, 100 percent brightness so and, and clyde what you can test too is if you press it again it should not start over however if you press the red one it should interrupt and start the red uh, okay sequence. so here is the yellow and then we'll interrupt it with the red and red just hook right over and if you hit the red again it should hopefully not start the red over again it should just do nothing and if i hit red again it does nothing great that that's the if not running. So if you had not checked that when you press red, it would basically start that sequence. That would over be again. that would be that checkbox there if not running. Yep. All right. Well, um, I, I I think that's I think that's the the best way to end this uh, tutorial. I guess. Um, do you want to spend five five can, minutes on effects? We can we can spend a couple minutes playing around on things that are built into uh, into FPP if that's what you'd like to do. Well, I was just gonna. So one thing that question that I get a lot is people that use their Pi to run their show, but that they want the button press to just affect the wings, but they want their show to continue on, and that's where effects come in. And what effects allow you to do is basically just change a subset of pixels rather than a, a, as your show continues to go. Um, would you like to me to show you how that works? So let me regurgitate that so that I make sure I understand exactly what you said. You're, you're saying um, the show is running. This is already outputting pixel data to these, but you want to be able to interrupt what it's doing and have it do its own thing. Well, let's just uh, kind of, um, let's say your Raspberry Pi though is running the whole show on your house, including your wings maybe, and everything's synchronized to music, it's going out on your FM station, right. but when someone presses the button, you don't want this sequencing to stop, you just want the the wings to change, the Correct. wings only. Correct. So that And that's where effects come in. Um, so if you, could you go over to uh, X-Lights? Let's go over to X-Lights. Pop, right there. And go into the sequencer. And then open up one of those sequences with the wings. We'll go ahead and open up this one. All right. So where it says all wings there, what you can do is right click on that. And uh, under model. Model. There we go. Um, convert. Why can't you do export? Because it's, a, because it's a group. So it needs to be, if, if are we trying to export um, a- An, an ESEQ. So an okay. ESEQ. So the, the effects have to be on the model, not the group. Oh, right. I was not aware of that. Okay, okay. Right, so what, so we can, we can kind of, I can, I can, um, I can fill in the blanks here. Insert multiple layers, insert multiple layers. Um, oh, I have two layers, so if I need to do another one, there we go, V, 
there we go. Okay. So, so now you have two models. That's basically what we have. We have two models. Yep. So uh, if you right click that, you should be able to hopefully export on the model level. Uh, there you go. And we're doing this as a what? Uh, so it's an ESEQ file down there. It's a FP subsequence. So if you, you think about your FSEQ, it's your entire show uh, sequenced to in every pixel in your display, whereas a, an effect is trimmed down in just the channels that are related to a specific model. Okay. And so when you, um, uh, if we can upload that ESEQ to FPP, so this is creating this is creating an ESEQ. It, 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 do you it, do you need them for both? Like so that actually so I thought you could export groups, but apparently I'm wrong. So maybe someone nope. can correct me. I I don't know if you can group those together. If you have to, it should more. work the same because they're the same exact model. Just one's backwards. Got it. I mean, you'd have to be able to run two ESEQs at the same time, and I don't think you can do that. Yeah, that's what I, that's what I was wondering. So okay, so uh, we have we have an ESEQ, and so you, so you may need to in this scenario create a custom model that so, is a combination of both wings together. Yeah. So in other words, uh, copy. In other words, basically, what you are but suggesting. But it should still work because both wings start at the same spot; they're just mirrored, so it should still work. Yeah, so if you right, so if you plugged in both, it of depends. Those the same output. It, it depends. I mean, it's uh, the wait. Let's it's, try it needs, out. Well, let's try it out. <laughs> so here is. We'll uh, be back, folks. With after these words, file manager sponsor. Experience and, lights, where you can get all your inactivity and your controllers to run your show. All right, back to you, Clyde. <laughs> got to hire you get some payroll okay so we have our eseq file which is right here we'll go ahead click drag it over there i think you need to drag it in that box at the bottom cancel there we go you were right okay so we have that in there Okay, and then yeah, go back to GPIO inputs, and then instead of start playlist, um, let's do effect. Scroll up to e. Oh, now that I think about it, it's effect start. Yeah, it is. Yeah, I was gonna say it's gonna be it's gonna have a start channel um, activated for it. Well, yeah. So this actually does get a little bit more complicated. So you can do... Um... So if you do the wings and you want them both to work the same way, you would just have to overlap the channel numbers in the two models, that's all. Yeah, or just uh, do the data, both of the data pins for the pixels on the same output. <laughs> so they just are always copied. Yeah. Wouldn't that be like a, uh, um, um, a virtual string? Yeah, anyway. you could do a virtual string to do that. But that would be... So let's show them that. So basically here, all we have to do is we have to change uh, the, the effect name. The effect name becomes our ESEQ file, correct? Yeah, so since you have made this limited channel set in this file, though, you do have to tell it the start channel. So in um, if you go into X lights, whatever the start channel was, you just want to copy that over. Oh, it looks like it's number one. So that's easy. Yeah, then you just re-upload your controller's configuration. But, I mean, you don't have to do that now. You can just show when you hit the button only one wing works, and then people will understand that it only puts data out for one, and then both wings should right. work. So, so what, you, what you could do, though, is, is, is press red to start a sequence, 
and then yellow should just take over on one of them. Yep. Ooh. Exactly right. It worked. Ooh. That's pretty slick. So that allows you to basically just override part of your show while it's running without so, interrupting anything. So and effect that, it. my friend, is FBB for dummies. Yes. Boom. Mic drop. And because now that's still doing, playing, because that's still play. playing, this is the other wing doesn't have anything going on on it except for whenever I tell the red to whenever I push the red button. So the red button basically is like X lights running the show right now. Correct. And this is interrupting the show, playing whatever for the social media moment. Right. Yep. Love it. Like it. Share this video. So um, what if, uh, so Rob, we were trying to do something before. Uh, we were trying to replicate the exact same thing so it does it on both outputs. And I said virtual strings. What could we try to, could we try to add a output to it to mirror it over? What kind of controller are you using? Well, it's the, just, a, it's just out hat. of the pie, right? It's out of the pie. I don't, I don't know if the, I mean, maybe Dan has it where the pie can do virtual strings. I mean, if you can. Right there. Okay. So then just the, see, I think it's way easier than that. I don't think you need a virtual string. I think you just have to copy channel one on what, you just oh, yeah. copy the channel numbers. Because you don't have them daisy chained together, do you? You have them with two outputs. No, that's correct. Yeah, but now you just lost your cool red button, yellow button effects. Now that you can make no, but but if 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 that were, um, I don't think FPP likes you. It made it green. Go ahead, see if it works. Hit the button. Woo! Oh. And they oh. are mirrored. They are wired exactly reverse wired. So that's working. One hundred percent. So there you have it, guys. FPP for dummies. Week number two. Yeah. Working. Everything seems to be working pretty good. Um, big buttons. How much are the big buttons, David? Oh, that if, is a great, que a great uh, question. If if somebody, and I'll let you go ahead and take control, and you can you can share your your you can share your screen. David, I think you should do a big buttons in and out special. Maybe. I like putting you on. It's like a. A peer pressure situation. Yeah, sure. Let's do it. Uh, <laughs> the code is I like big buttons. <laughs> and, so uh, is this going to be like a complete package? They get an in and out, the buttons. Oh, wow. You're really you're really laying it on thick, aren't you? Well, you uh, know what? I, look, I'm trying gotta, to help you with sell. They've they've got to they've got to <laughs> extend. They've got to extend out because they're 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 going to do something up at the curb with a with a nice little yeah. button package, and they don't want their precious little Raspberry Pi. Which are, me right now, like, he has to go build a build a product for this. <laughs> I, I'm building a, a coupon code for you. So the so, code the code is, I like big buttons. I like <laughs> that. I like, and I cannot lie. That's a, that's a uh, good, that's a good one. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll do, uh, until midnight. I like big okay. buttons for 25% off with the, with the in and out pie hat. So you have to buy two, both to get it. It's a buy. Uh, no, either, e well, either one. Oh, it, it, it doesn't matter. Either or. Yeah. So I'm creating this right now. So give me like 10 minutes while I make sure it works. Brad said he'd like it to be Clyde likes FPP. <laughs> Clyde, lo Clyde loves <laughs> FPP. <laughs> all lower cases, no spaces. That, oh, that man, actually, you got people, they're they're that, knocking down your door to get these. Oh, man. That, that, they that like act, big buttons, too. That actually uh, doubles the price if you enter in Clyde loves FPP. <laughs> Clyde ships to your house and does it for you. Yeah. <laughs> There's no guarantee on that either. All right, so rules. Hang on. Uh oh. 
You guys, well, you, why don't you guys uh, talk about something else? Well, I was just saying, why don't we wrap it up, Todd, so, to get off from going think, live? I think, then... I, I think, I uh, think it was pretty good, uh, pretty good get together tonight. Um, you guys have any questions in chat? Anything for David uh, before he? Uh, is there any questions that you guys have for him before he has to concentrate on setting up coupon codes because those are a pain in the neck and he has to pay attention to what he's doing? So just throw them in chat. I didn't Speak see Speak now or forever hold your peace. All right. Well, with no, that. Just... Huge thank you to everybody. Dave, David, thank you for being here. Uh, much appreciated. This has been a fun project. I hope we can do a couple more fun projects coming up before the holiday season smacks us in the face, which it's about to do. Um Rob, thanks for getting, uh, you went live. So uh, thank goodness this is going to be on uh, either Facebook. So where, where do we go live, by the way? Facebook? Facebook, Facebook, yeah. Good. So everybody out there in Facebook land, I hope you guys liked the video. If you did, hit the thumbs up. Uh, share thumbs this up. with people. Share this share with people. a lot. Because I I, I don't know. but we've, we've never done big buttons before. David's never done big buttons with PPD before. So, uh, and Boscoya now just got to do uh, the wings with the big buttons. So uh, that's everything we have. Guys, have a wonderful Thank evening. You. Thanks for joining us. And we'll see you in the next video. Take care and goodbye for now. Bye-bye.